وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد As always, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering and may He the Almighty make the Malaika, the angels shroud us with their wings and may the Sakina, tranquility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend upon us and may He the Almighty envelop us with His Rahmah and may He make high mention of us in the seven heavens. InshaAllah ta'ala for today's heart softener, we will be touching on Tadabburul Qur'an. Because sadly, even though we are in a month otherwise known as the month of Quran, many of us, including myself, we tend to neglect reading the Quran, reciting the Quran, let alone making tadabbur of the Quran. So what is tadabbur? Tadabbur is to ponder and reflect on the verses of the Quran. And what better an opportunity than to apply this in this beautiful month, otherwise known as the month of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He states in the Noble Quran, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan is in which unzila fihi al-Quran. The Quran descended in this beautiful month. So my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, let us make use of this blessed month to make tadabbur of the Quran. Because after all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states in the noble Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ do they not ponder on the Quran, on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or have they got locks on their hearts? Allahu Akbar. Now you see how closely making tadabbur upon the Quran is related with an individual's heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he questions, do they not ponder on the words of the Quran? Or have they got locks on their hearts? Allahu Akbar. So if you cannot ponder on the Quran, that means your heart is sealed up. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. After all, the heart of an individual, just as how Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu is reported to have said that the heart of an individual is like a king in his body. Whilst the limbs of that body they are the subjects of that king. For whatever the king commands, the subjects will abide and obey. And also he is reported to have said that the heart is like an army commander and the limbs are its forces and troops. Whatever the army commander commands, the forces and the troops abide. And also our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is reported to have said much more beautiful words. Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that in, that in an individual's heart there is a piece of flesh. Ida saluhat saluhal jasadu kullu. If that piece of flesh is upright, if that piece of flesh is proper, then the whole body is proper and only good will come out of that body. The narration goes along the lines of these words. But if that piece of flesh were to go bad, if that piece of flesh were to become evil, the whole body of an individual will become evil, will become corrupt, will become perverted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. For if an individual's heart were to go bad, only evil would come out from that body. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to purify our hearts. Because the more we ponder on the powerful and beautiful words of our maker, the more we will understand 
how great and how powerful a creator we are subject to. The more we ponder on the Quran, for the Quran is not just only for reading or only for listening, because Allah Himself states in the, the ayah I recited earlier, Afala yatadabbarun. Do they not ponder? Because Allah could have said, Do they not recite the Quran? Do they not hear the Quran? Nay, but rather He used the word tadabbur. Do they not ponder on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, like I said, the more we ponder, the more we will be able to understand the greatness of our Creator. The more we ponder on the ayah, Say for example where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. Allahu Akbar. Allah, there is no deity worthy of worship other than him. Al-hayy, the ever living, the eternal. Al-qayyum, the one who sustains all of his creation. La ta'khuduhu. Neither does sleep or even a tiny slumber ever overtake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our maker is so powerful and so great. Hadith is in Muslim. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, he reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Inna Allah la yanam. Indeed, Allah the Almighty, He does not sleep. Nor does it befit His majesty and His glory that He should sleep. The narration goes along the lines of these words. He lifts the scales of things and He lowers them. The deeds of the night go up to him before the deeds of the day. And then the deeds of the day go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the deeds of the night. Hijabuhu nur Allahu Akbar. The veil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made of light. Allahu Akbar. The veil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made of light. Law kashafahu. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to ever remove that veil of his, لَأَحْرَقَتْ سُبْحَاتُ وَجْهِهِ مَنْ تَهَا إِلَيْهِ بَصَرُهُ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ Allahu Akbar, Allah save us all. If Allah the Almighty were to remove his veil, the light of the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would burn would burn every single creation in the sight, in the path of the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And scholars explain that would mean that every single creation would burn to ashes because nothing is hidden from the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is ever, not even atom, not even an atom, not even a molecule is hidden from the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah the Almighty were to remove his veil, the light of his face would would burn every single thing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into ashes. This is how powerful our Creator is. The more we ponder on the Quran, the more we understand how great Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And the more we ponder on the Quran, the more we stand a chance to become from the Ahlul Quran. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-Qur'an. Oh Allah, make us from the people of the Qur'an. Make us so closely attached to the Qur'an that we recite the Qur'an earnestly, that we recite the Qur'an often. We live in modern times. I would say most of the gathering over here, 99.9%, all of us would have smartphones. And it is so easy to download the Qur'an applet onto our smartphones. But sadly, the question that we need to ask ourselves, do we open up the Facebook applet Mo? Do we open up the Twitter applet Mo? Do we open up the Instagram applet Mo? Or do we open up the Quran Mo? We, it is so facilitated, you don't have to carry the hard cover of the Quran everywhere. You have it as if as an application. Wherever you are, you can open it up and start reciting the Quran so that we become people of the Quran. We become so closely attached to the beautiful words of our powerful maker. There was an incident that took place in Cairo and this was narrated by a scholar. This was an incident that took place in a hospital. The doctor narrates this incident to this scholar, a very reputed, notable scholar. 
There was once a Hafid al-Quran who had to undergo a surgery. He goes to the hospital, he meets the doctor. He's an elderly person, but a, a person who is extremely pious and very closely attached to the Quran. He goes and meets the doctor, asks about the surgery, and that the doctor informs that Hafid that the surgery will take almost around four to five hours. The Hafiz, the Hafid al-Quran, he starts to cry and weep. The doctor, the surgeon, he says, there's nothing to worry. Please don't worry. It's just a minor surgery. It will be over before you know it. And anyway, we are going to administer anesthetics. You won't even feel it. Why are you crying? Then the Hafid al-Quran, he explains, I'm crying because today, if I were to undergo the surgery for four to five hours, I would miss my daily birth. My daily recitation of the Noble Quran, Allahu Akbar. We the Hufadul Quran, we should spend so much of time with the Quran. We should make a fixed amount of reciting, perhaps three chapters, four chapters, five chapters. And even the people who are not Hufadul Quran, they should also intend strongly to recite as much as possible from the Quran. So, nevertheless, the patient, the Hafid, then he says, I have a request, doctor. Can you please give me one hour, lay me on the, on the table to perform the surgery. Give me one hour, let me start reciting the Quran. After one hour, you come and you conduct your surgery and finish it off. The doctor, he says, of course, Allahu Akbar, by all means, I give you one hour, you recite the Quran, me and my team will come and do the surgery after one hour. One hour. He's on the table, he's reciting the Quran because after all he is a Hafid, he has memorized the Quran. He recites it beautifully out of his memory. Right after one hour, the doctor and his team, they, they enter the room and they start the surgery. The doctor, he informs this scholar, Wallahi ya Shaykh, Wallahi the surgery took almost four to five hours throughout the surgery, even though we administered anesthetics, the patient, the Hafid al-Quran was reciting reciting the Quran throughout the surgery. Allahu Akbar. He was reciting the Quran throughout the surgery. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, if we live with the Quran, we will die with the Quran. Because after all, pondering upon the Quran is closely connected to your heart. And this tongue of yours is the spoon that takes out what is in the heart. So if you have the Quran, if you have the love for the Quran in your heart, the love for the speech of your powerful and beloved maker, even when death comes to you, leave alone a minor surgery. Even when Malakul mouth comes and stands in front of you, nothing other than words that will please your maker only will come out of your mouth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people of the Quran. And I don't find it hard Oh, I don't find it difficult to believe that story because I have a personal experience. Just a few weeks ago, my own beloved father had to undergo a small surgery. I took him to the hospital and the doctor, he said, we have to administer a very small, a general anesthetic. But the only issue is it is like a truth serum. The side effect is the patient might start to uh, mutter things that are in his subconscious. So don't take notice of it. So the doctor, he administered the drug for my father. And after a while, my father, he started crying out all types of adhkar. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. That is the, the minute I witnessed that, shudders and shivers ran down my spine. Because I was thinking if I was in that place, I don't know what may come out from my mind. Because the things of our mind are all hidden. We show a different picture. But the secrets, those deep secrets are within us. So if we are truly sincere and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even at a time like that, or even when malakul mouth comes in front of you, only things that would please your maker, will articulate or will come out from your uh, tongue. So please, I implore, make use of this blessed month to ponder on the Quran, to make 
more and more recitation of the Quran and to ponder on the words of our powerful maker resulting in us becoming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and resulting in us making the best out of this month. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to ponder on his words and may he the almighty help us to make the best out of this month of Ramadan and may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how he united us here tonight with our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وآخر دعواي أن الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم 